Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome to today's conversation on Gift of Healing TV. I'm Sarah Jane, and today are my co-hosts, Patricia. Welcome, Patricia. Hello, great to be here. Great to see everybody. Looking forward to this. No, so am I. And uh, my, uh, my other co-host, David. David, welcome. Hi there. Good to see everybody. We've got a little bit of a delay by the sounds of this, so bear with us, folks. This is technology and the joy of it. And David, as Cecilia is your guest, please feel free to introduce Cecilia to folks. Well, thank you, Will. I've known Cecilia for possibly 10 years and count it now. It may be even be longer. But uh, I met Cecilia in a strange way that we come up in Cecilia's talk tonight. But Cecilia is a wonderful yoga teacher, um, energy healer, communicator, and many other things that you may find out as the evening goes. But welcome, Cecilia. Thank you for being here. Um, you've chosen your stick tonight can you tell us why that is so important for you for you to discuss this evening oh yeah thank you thank you for inviting me everyone and uh, yeah so this this i'm looking to the right because this is this is painted or written on my wall huh change eyes um on my animal communication journey which you know that's how i met david because of my akasha at that um, time, she, uh, I went to the store to buy stones, crystals, and um, where we where we usually went, and we were not met very friendly that evening. I guess I wanted to close earlier, and I really needed a gift for a friend, and I left the store going, "What am I going to buy?" And, and Akasha says to me in in Swedish, she says, "You need to find David," and David is basically David in Swedish. Um, Later that evening, I took another evening walk with her and I walked by this, this street, which I walked quite often. She stopped and I looked up and there was David's in Harlem, this store, which was David Tyrrell here, his store with crystals and everything. So next day I walked into the store and he came, you came out from the back and you said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, actually my dog told me to go here and you didn't find it weird at all. So that's, that's how it all started. So Akasha, <laughs> Who's not here anymore? She left in 2020. Um, my business is named after her, Kesha Talking. She left me with that summer, which was two months before she left. She made me this list of things I needed to do. And I thought we were in COVID times. So she's just making a list so we got something to do this summer. But at the bottom of it was this, which I had to put on the wall. Your task is to teach people to understand animals and understand nature, see their perspective. And she said, change eyes. And she keeps coming back with that. And more animals I meet, it's about changing eyes, like literally seeing things from someone else's perspective, whether that's a tree or a bird or yeah, any animal. Of course we can do it with people too. Um, but it gets more, the animals say it gets more interesting. It's more like a child, childlike game. If you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look through the eyes of a moose, or I'm going to look through the eyes of a squirrel, it feels more playful, and then we drop our guards. Um, but it is important to change eyes, because we're not alone on this planet, uh, which we sometimes tend to think. Not the four of us, but... <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm curious what change eyes would mean to you guys. I'll, I'll start. See, for me... Changing eyes means just changing the way we look at things, mm. opening our eyes and being able, being able to see things more differently. Um, I know I sort of sent this to you after our conversation sort of last week, that there's that lovely picture of that deer crossing the road. Yeah. And it says, you know, is it a deer crossing the road or is it a road crossing the forest? Mm. What yeah. is your perception of what is happening? And for me, the truth of that is it's it's the forest, it's the, the road crossing the forest. 
the deer is just doing what the deer has always done, yeah. which is walking in the forest and going through the forest. And so it is opening our eyes and being able to view things as they really are, actually, rather than the perception that that actually we're so-called the top dogs and everything else, we, we can do what we like. And we're not here to do that. We're meant to be the caretakers mm -hmm. of yeah. everything that is on this planet. And, you know, and, and our conversation about um, sort of trophic cascades, it is yeah. really important to sort of to realize that the animals are essential, every single one of them. Even if we can't see a purpose for things like wasps, all the animals, all the creatures are essential. So changing eyes, that's what that means, is opening our eyes. But I love what you're saying about looking th th at the world through the eyes of a squirrel or whatever <laughs> because of the wildlife we have in our garden. So, yes, I love it. Yeah. And, and if I may jump in, like, just when, when I listen to you, I also, like, got, like, you guys get stuff coming in all the time, like, also, we, because, but the animals are teaching us to allow ourselves to be taken care of, which yeah. we're not always that good at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, David, Patricia, who was like? Yeah. You go first, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you about seeing different eyes for me like taking a step back because sometimes you're so f in the middle and you need to take a step back we are we've kind of been f folk and then we put blinkers on and now if we step we can see things on a wider perspective in more of what's going on around us rather than this little the box that we tend to focus on and it is <clears throat> that an eye um, look through an eye of a look in the eyes of a squirrel or a moose that really makes you think and really puts you into that space very very quickly of seeing it all we have a squirrel or we just having a run along the fence and now I'm seeing that squirrel looking back at us. <laughs> Real interesting. Yeah. Oh, do you know what's funny? I, I lost my... No, that's why I would... Yeah, I was just going to say I lost my little dog over a year ago now, and I really, really missed him. And the farmer next door had four beautiful cats that he didn't treat well at all. He just ignored them and occasionally threw food their way. And so, I mean, I just, I feel totally at one with all animals. I've always been like that, but I've always said, I'm not a cat person, can't do cats. And the reason I'm just thinking, I really had to shift my perception of all of that because they selected us they came in, they've adopted us, of course we're yeah. feeding them well and I'm not daft enough to think that that's not got a lot to do with it but you know <laughs> they are amazing and the one that particularly seems to have become my familiar if you like is black and these massive green eyes just staring at you and they talk yeah. all the time they talk and you know if I say do you need a do you know, do you need a pee, do you need a poo, you know, it's ah, ah, you know, and you know exactly where they're going, what they're doing. And during last year, we had 23 uh, kittens from those same cats, 23 <laughs> we had to deal with. And they would, in the morning, once they got going a wee bit, in different batches, you know, once they got going a bit, they would all be lined up at our bedroom door in the morning. We would open the bedroom door and they would all come in, these wee things about this size, and they would climb up the foot of the bed till you would see this row of ears. And it was like Mexicans in a battle, you know. <laughs> and then they would come rushing up to, well, do you know, I don't think I've ever had so much love undiluted love in my life 
as I, you know, and Bill was the same. We both received and of course we were giving that. But my stepson got one, he lives just north of Dublin. And um, we went up to visit them last week. And we walked in, I hadn't seen this, this cat since she was a baby. And uh, she just stood up in a chair, she looked at us, and she proceeded to opera sing. It's the only way to describe it for about five minutes. And it was oh, awesome. So and they, knew, they had never seen her doing this before. And it was that recognition that just totally underlines how, I mean, we are one with everything, but there, you know, you really are one. And uh, it was a wonderful moment, that, you know, and I'll savour that for a long, long time. And, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm even sharing that, but I think it's just important. It's beautiful. Yeah, to remember we're one with them all. And I've had so much trouble with eyes on myopic, short-sighted, and I've had all kinds. I won't bore you. But seriously, and I've had to look at that metaphysically. So what was causing that? So, yeah interesting yeah yeah absolutely cecilia share a, a little more of the work that you do because obviously your your dog but also yeah. you 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 can talk to the animals and they can talk to you for a while you're a little bit dr do little <laughs> No, I mean, it's something that we all can, you know, as kids. I mean, how often did we come in and say, you know, mom, this, the tree said that, and, the, you know, the squirrel said this, or the neighbor's cat said that. And it was like, yeah, it's all right, the kids. And then at a certain point, we, we go to school and we're told we can't. So it's something that we're all born with. It's all innate in us. And uh, I, I learned this, or learned, relearned, reopened it uh, through someone who helped me with my dog because um, I had a few issues and everyone's told me that's what happens with a husky, but I knew from our breed in Sweden that no, that's not the case. And I had actually, I, I guess, a colleague from David in my yoga class, uh, Nicole, a medium, and she, um, I told her, I was a little bit arrogant at that time, I wasn't that open to everything. I said, if you can speak to dead people, I'm sure you can speak to my dog. And she said, no, I can't, but I know someone who can. Long story short, this lady helped me. And then through her, I, I, her teacher came from the US. I studied with this Martha Williams. And then with Heli, who was the one talking to my dog, Akasha, uh, she taught me a lot more so that I could teach it myself. Uh, but essentially, you listen. They learn. It's listening to animals. So we ask questions, and, and they, they give replies. That's how you open it up. So people usually come to me if there's a problem, you know, your, your cat is peeing all over the house or your dog keeps running away or, you know, your horse just all of a sudden doesn't want to let you on or these kind of things. And I would say it's about 2% of the people that come because they want to know just, how, you know, how's my cat doing? Um, so, yeah, then I speak to connect on distance, speak to them one on one. And then I speak to the person like we're talking now online usually. Um, and that's, yeah. And then I, I teach courses. Um, I've been across, I think three times to Scotland. Right? Um, but it's basically that that's how it works. But the more you do it, the more you get, you hear things, you know, when you walk past the horses or you're in the garden, <laughs> sitting there peaceful with a cup of coffee and all of a sudden you hear some, something and you're like, what? And there's a crow there, like something comes in. So yeah, that's basically part of the work I do. And that's how I ended up in Reiki because I wanted to give Reiki to animals and then you have to practice on people first. And um, yeah, so that's, that, that's kind of the work I do uh, with animals. And I learned something from every, every animal. Like I had this, this dog last week and he said, and I think we talked about this when we talked last week, but there's, he said to his person that, um, I want you to practice self-kindness. And he said, because there's so much talk about the importance of self-love right now, and it is, it's a big thing. Mm. We need to learn self-love, but it's such a big step for us because we've learned to do the opposite. So he, he came in and he said, 
I want you to practice self-kindness because it's the way you will get to self-love. And I'm going, whoa, thank you. Like, I get something from every animal I work with. So that's... Um, I think... I think as you were saying that, Patricia, that came up just before you came on with us about you hearing a voice. Yeah. <laughs> and we think it was a tree speaking, mm -hmm. but it just goes to show that we are not separate yes. from animals. We're not separate from nature. And that's why I think, you know, your facilitation who we are all connected and the importance of keeping or connecting if we've lost connection with both animals and nature yes and yeah. we need to do that more often you say that cecilia totally that's that's what they're teaching us and it's it's, it's i feel stupid saying they are teaching us because it's like you are saying we are all one and um it's about listening to to all the voices um, and the songs, so quite often there's songs, so there's colors, there's, there's themes. And we're all neighbors, like I can say, okay, my neighbors on the other side of this wall, but there's all these neighbors in the garden, like the trees and the, the birds. And, mm. and I spoke to, um, I, I worked as a personal, I work as a personal trainer as well. I spoke to a customer about it today about the birds because we live in a in the most dense populated country in Europe because the Netherlands is very small and there's a lot of people on a very small area and we have so many birds like like mm -hmm. birds of prey small birds we've got birds everywhere and in a sense it is like they really are our neighbors they're they're everywhere they're, it's more crowded almost with birds than with people and we are all too many people here so I love how I also read some research quite some years ago that came out from New York, New York City, that the birds have started to sing louder since they live in cities because they need to hear each other. But that also means that we hear the birds more. Mm -hmm. So it seems that the more populated some places get, the more the birds come in to, to, to sort of go like, hello, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're here too. We're all in this together. Yeah. So it is, like you say, David, it's a total reminder of we're all one. There's no, um, like I love how the Native Americans, and I mean all Native um, peoples have the different words for it, but the Native Americans say the tree people and the stone people for the mountain and the, yeah, the horse people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, I was walking down just a lane not far from the house here and there were some beautiful horses and um, one in particular, he saw me and he stood up very erect, you know, and I just looked and I thought, well, I want to acknowledge him. I'm going to say hello. So what will I do? So I just went like that, you know, I just lowered my head and came back up and he did exactly the same back to me. He totally acknowledged me and I was so chuffed and Bill was with me. And sometimes I think he thinks I've gone mad. He, said, he says, how did you do that? I said, I don't know, but isn't it? It is so beautiful because they really, I mean, they're just so tuned in because I absolutely adore Horses are amazing, the power, that motivation, carrying you forward, just their energy I find inspiring. So yeah. very powerful, isn't it? But yeah, they, it really did. It spoke to me that way and I totally got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've worked with um, sort of cats, dogs and horses with the Reiki. Yes. There was one particular horse when I appeared one day and it came charging across the field. It came straight in and put its head straight at my heart. Oh, wow. Um, and it was just like that horse knew who I was, knew what I was there for. And, you know, and, and oh, it was able to take, I don't, I don't feel the energies being drawn, but it was just like, absolutely. It, it knew, but I've also, but one thing I found sort of working with cats and dogs was that 
people would phone and say they've got a problem. And there was one particular lady, but it's, it, it, it's, it, the story happens a lot. And she said, oh, um, the dog gets really stressed walking past um, sort of like a, a tele telegraph pole. And the dog was only getting stressed because it was picking up on her stress. Yeah. It's a problem she had about walking past telegraph poles. Okay. And the number of people I've said, um, it's not really a Reiki for the animal. It's actually Reiki for you. <laughs> <laughs> you they, it's, it's their way. They're picking up on whatever's going on in you. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking, oh, there's something wrong with the animal, there's, no. there's probably not anything wrong with the animal, but they've picked up on something that you could do with support with. Mm. The trouble is people find it very difficult to um, relate to what I'm saying. <laughs> but I say, mm. you know, they can, they can take. I, I'm happy to open the Reiki channel for them. They can take. But I really get the sense, actually, from the conversation we're having, because they'd the, the person had opened up about themselves as well. And that's how I was able to understand. Actually, I know exactly what's going on here. Your dog actually would like you to have the help. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the beauty of it, because it's 98 percent of the time it's mirroring. But I love how you explain it, because it's like the dog. The, the person would not ask for Reiki for herself, but she would ask it for her dog. And and this is why I love this line of work, because I've gotten the question quite often, like, can you do this with people? And I mean, you guys know it, like David, your medium, and you know, you know it. And I said, yeah, but I don't want to. I've got nothing against working with people, but I want to do it for the animals. But also, I think it's the contrast with the fitness work I do is that people think they want to change. I say think they want to change because they're trying to quite often trying to live up to someone else's standards and not their own wishes. Um, so, and if they really need to change, it's very difficult to change. But when their animal is telling them, you need to do this, you need to change that, uh, they do it straight away because of the animal. So I just love the beauty of, and also the big gifts the animals are in our lives because they they push us so that we will change, but we do it for them because of that love. Uh, and, and that's what they want to teach us too, that can you hold that love for yourself? Which is not that easy. So it's totally, I love that. Like the rake is for the person, but she loves a dog. So she's going to ask for the dog and not for herself. And I mean, I could be talking to myself. I mean, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, ab absolutely. Anybody got any questions? That... Sorry. Carry on. Oh, uh, yes. I was going to say, we've all gone through a very sensitive two, three years that has bad us on so many energetic levels. But we tend to forget all the wildlife, all the nature has mm -hmm. also gone through that trauma as well. Yes. And we tend to forget it. Mm -hmm. And you can pass comment on this if you want, Celia, but after the first time of being locked down and we managed to get out, went up to a safari park up at Blair Gowry, I think, somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and we was walking back, the animals seemed to be fine, but we were walking back to the car park and there was this row of trees, similar to what you've got, I think, Patricia, just yeah. these two rows of trees. And we both had to stop and the trees stopped us. And you heard the words, oh my goodness, thank goodness you're back. Yeah. And it was like the trees had missed the exchange of energy with us. And we had missed the change of yeah. exchange of energy with them. And they just said, at last, we can start living again. And I thought, am I just hearing this? And I know I've worked as who I've worked with for years, but it did make question, but they were so strong. Yeah. So, you know, 
what you're saying, this is, you know, listening, the importance of listening and connecting into nature. They have so much to tell us. Yeah, absolutely. I love it because the one thing that came through that I had to thank you, David, to talk about since I, I said this is the subject it, here. It just says on the changes, just listen, always just do that. Listen. <laughs> See? But, but it, it is just so important that is. we people have to realize how important they are to nature and their animals. Yeah. as much as they are important to us exactly. because energy the energy the frequency the communication needs to work two ways i love that thank you because it like you say it's it's a circle and that is so beautiful it's so true and again it's this this sort of that's, I guess that's why self-love is so difficult for us, because it's difficult for us to also see that we are important to other species and other beings, even other people, other humans. So it's, it's beautiful. And I love yeah. this tree came in as a bike home to, to get on here with you guys. I don't know which one of it was, but it, it said that so, somebody had asked, isn't it boring to be a tree? Because you just stand there all the time. And he was like, it's not boring because everything happens when you stop. It's, if you just stay where you are, there's so much happening. And I was like, oh yeah, you're right. It's, like, it's not like you need to move somewhere for things to happen. I was like, oh, that's that's a huge insight in these crazy days. Like, yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's amazing the the network they have beneath the earth. Their mm. their roots all reach out to each other and intertwine with each other. And you know we're moving in a fortnight's time, about half a mile down the road. So I've had to go out and tell the trees, this is what's happening. We're not abandoning you. We're still friendly with the farmers here, but we would choose to live away from the smells, the lovely aroma of the farm. And it's a much lighter house. So we're going down there. I've had to go out and tell them all. And, I, and then I've been walking like mad. I've been praying because I want these four cats to follow us down. So we've got a wee cat house built. We've got a cat house for the cats as well. Beautiful. You couldn't write it, could you? It's like David with his <laughs> house. My goodness me. But as during, you yeah. <laughs> during lockdown, yeah. what was so wonderful was, and I, it, it was actually at night more than anything. It was because I open my window every night. I sort of look out and if I can see the stars and the moon, it's brilliant. If I can't, it's cloudy. It is what it is. But it was opening the window at night and the silence mm. because there was no traffic there was no background hum and during the day there's a little wood locally literally over the road uh, just up a bit and over the road um and i walk in it most days and it was being aware of walking through the woods and hearing the bird song and being aware of the lack of the hum of traffic yeah. Yeah. it was beautiful mm -hmm. it really was it was if you were miles away from any roads any traffic you couldn't get the hum of anything other than all you were hearing was nature yeah yeah beautiful that's lovely and but right by busy roads mm -hmm. but because people weren't meant to be out in their cars unless they were going to the essential jobs yeah it yeah. was and it was it was wonderful and at, at the moment i've sort of because of the time of year it is walking in the woods in the morning I've, i have my niece's dog a couple of times a week and going first thing in the morning taking the dog for a walk and the bird song in the woods is beautiful. 
you know, it, it's quietened yeah. down in the afternoon, but it's that morning. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's listening. And you're sort of talking about the trees and it standing there. But what you've got to realize is the birds nest in them, squirrels yeah. nest in them. Then there's all the insects that burrow into them, make their homes in them, sort of feed off of them. Sort of there is so much going on. Yeah. It, and, and it's being aware of that in life, isn't it? It's not just, um, oh, it's a tree standing there. It's got leaves on, they'll fall off in the winter. There is so much more to it than yeah. that. Mm. Um, we talked about the, the, the two videos, the one about wolves and being re reintroduced yeah. to Yellowstone Park and the massive difference, their in reintroduction, the changes to the park, the benefits to so many other animals with the reintroduction of the wolves. And I don't, I, I know I sent you the link. I don't know whether you had time to look. But, I also, yet, but yeah, the whales, right? Whales. Yeah. And, and the fact that actually the whales have an effect on our climate. But it's a positive effect because of how they are, what they do, what they bring. Yeah. And yeah. it supports actually the attraction and the capture of carbon which of course is what we also are trying to take out because of, of, of the carbon that we put into the air. Yeah. And so it actually, it makes a huge difference. So trees are essential for the capture of carbon, but actually so yeah. are our seas. Yeah, and the, and the cor corals and yeah. yeah. So it it's being aware and being open to how essential many many creatures are yeah. to and it, it is and they and they do call they call it a trophic cascade because if you take the trophy animals out it's the effect that those those animals have had on in Romania they um Ch Ceausescu I think it was he banned everybody else from being able to hunt wolves. He was the only one who could. I believe that's the case. Mm -hmm. And what happened was because that was the case, the wolves actually were able to stay alive. They actually roamed the forest. They kept the deer at bay. So they, the deer were controlled. And this is what happened in Yellowstone. Yeah. The wolves were taken out. And so the deer, the elk, they had nothing to be afraid of down on the plains and by the rivers. And they destroyed all the aspen, aspen trees. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was the roots of the trees that kept the riverbanks yeah. stable. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I, I, yeah, I, I have a passion about this because I know there are people who are very anti-wolves. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I no, I'm not. I'm on, I'm, I'm on the other side, talking just yeah. like you. And something yeah. that came up for me was this, like, when we just look at humans, as, as humans do, and we look at science for, you know, for well-being. So we're looking at body and and they are starting to look at the mind. But one of the things that have been coming up so much lately is, like, awe is very important to us. Like, the, then there people talk about the awe of a sunset and everything. And I think that's gorgeous. Like we live in a very in a very busy place, and there's a, a huge beach around the whole country actually. But when there's a sunset, okay, people live on the phones, but you have tens of thousands of people standing along the shoreline filming the sunset. But also these big animals, so what we call the big ones, the, the wolf and the and the whales. These are we can even see it on social media when you people go like, whoa. And that to me is awe. So we have removed the awe from nature and now we know scientifically it's proven that that has a huge effect on our mental well-being um mm -hmm. i get totally stoked about those connections because it kind of proves again what yellowstone proves as well and that we're all one because the ecosystem becomes healthy when the wolves and the whales and the, and the sharks can thrive uh, but we become healthy why 
because we're all one. I mean, I don't need to preach to the church because we, the four of us already know this, but I mean, this just dogs me out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know, I was out boating on the, um, near the island of Col, just off the west coast of Scotland. And um, I was with uh, a friend of Bill's, really, <clears throat> and he was quite a high-powered businessman uh, in what I call TikTok world. But this, he had an escape house out in that area. So he took us out in his boat, and we were just paddling along. And suddenly, out of nowhere came this thing the size of a London bus is the only way to describe it. It was a basking shark. And it was right alongside our boat. Beautiful creature. And of course, it's it was eating the plankton. That's what they eat. And the mouth are just opening. And of course, to some degree, it's cleansing and cleaning the, the waters. So I just scratched it on the back and it kind of you know, kept around, it just kept around us. It was lovely and it was following us. And that same night, um, this this chap had the most amazing bass voice and he kept saying to me, Patricia, will you bring your drum? Let's go up the hill. Uh, he says, I want, to, you know, he, he kind of was a closet shamanic person. He didn't want anybody to know, but he liked the work that I was doing. So I said, yeah, sure, come on, we'll go. And we went up and I just started drumming and everything and he brought out this voice. It was just awesome. It was amazing. But what he told me afterwards was that when he was doing that, he went into a sort of visual trance and it gathered all these wolves all around him. He said, that's all I could see were these beautiful wolves and... Uh, and he says, but you know, Patricia, it's something to do with my family coming back here. This is, and I said, well, wolf is the totem that would be about family and love and all of that. And um, he said, well, the, uh, he says, I just feel that. And I said, well, I, I think there is going to be a gathering of your clan, if you like. And uh, about a year later, he contacted me and he said that that was happening. They were coming from all over the world to the little island of Col. Heaven knows where they all stayed. But I mean, seriously? I said, really? He says, yes. He says, my, my son got a hold of this idea as well and, and got around and invited them all in. So it was really, I mean, that's the wolf bringing all of that to him, his family, his ancestral roots. New Zealand, Australia, Canada, they came from all over. It was quite amazing. I got goosebumps all over. Yeah. And he was bumping into people on the beach and they would say to him, oh, you're, and they knew who he was and he knew who they were. It was, it was remarkable. He has since left all that kind of world. He doesn't do, it was a big financial situation he was in. Doesn't do it anymore, just lives in the wild, gone back to nature, new marriage, new partner, new everything, just, you know, just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it shows us how disconnected we have become mm -hmm. from part of our own ecosystem on this planet, doesn't it? When you hear stories like this. Absolutely. Because this is where we should have been. This is where we should sort of stayed because we are all part of the eco natural world animal world system and in a way we've taken ourselves out from it or life the way life has been it's withdrawn us from yeah. our natural home yeah. and that's caused disruption in so many ways I'm listening to your stories and I'm sure you agree, Cecilia, that the more we connect back in to the, let's say, natural ecosystem, because everything, how life can improve and increase for us, say, the joy in the heart, the all moments and things like that, 
you know, the more we step back in, the more changes in the natural way, and the natural way of support this world, you know, I think the better. I don't know what you feel, Cecilia. Totally. And again, like coming back to like when the lockdown happened, like you had the same as us over here, uh, when, when you talked about this, there were absolutely no traffic. And in the beginning here, you were not, you shouldn't even be allowed outside walking unless you had a dog. Um, so when you were out walking, there, there was this time when, oh my goodness, this, I love when this happened, this huge hero just flew by. Now I want to talk to you guys, a hero. I mean, from this house to the house over there, it's like eight meters. Like, <laughs> that's a sign for us. Sorry, guys. <laughs> like, I'll look it up later. But, you know, in lockdown, like, um, you could only be out in the beginning if you had a dog. And actually, the conversations you had with people that you would call total strangers on mm -hmm. a long distance, because yeah. they were out with a dog, and you were so happy to see another human being, which was really this heart connection. It all proves what, what you were saying, David, too, like, through the animal where we're with we are connecting into our heart and then to somebody else mm -hmm. and it's you like okay uh, david and i i will say okay we've known each other 10 years but it's like 110 or 110,000 years because we've talked about so much in these years <laughs> and i'm such a language nerd i love languages i had really good teachers as well uh which was lucky but and also, I'm really into all the old scriptures. Like, I grew up in a, in a in a village very close to Viking sites. And I had good history to teach us. And I'm into yoga, so I got all these scriptures and all these things. And quite often, in whether it's it's our what we've grown up with, whether we are religious or not, like the Christian scriptures or actually the old uh, Indian scriptures, um, these words come up that that we are higher than the animals so we are the caretakers of the natural world and everything mm -hmm. but looking back these scriptures have all been translated into the languages we know now and the languages we know now got a higher is the word hierarchy higher um hierarchy when, hierarchy when the bible was put down on paper which we didn't have before so actually they have words, even the old Scandinavian scriptures, that we wouldn't understand. So at that point, I'm just guessing now, but at that point, because for the Scandinavian ones, I know it's there because I can understand that ancient when I read it, but there was no words that made a difference between us and the animals. Like the Native Americans have the stone people, and again, going back to that, uh, so that kind of was created, even though that was not the case. And, and that made us travel further and further away from that connection because of how the hierarchy came into society through church, but also through how everything grew politically. Even though from the beginning it was just a translation mistake. And that's, that's what I love about the animal communication or the nature communication or the messages we get, or even when Patricia, when you, when you were touching this shark, like mm. that, that is, a, that is a communication. That's something going on there and you don't need words because the understanding is there. And the moment we put our limited words on it, we, we actually get disconnected. So it's, I think it's important for the humanity that we have an understanding of what's, what's been going on and and actually just because of some mistake because we're all brought up that way that if i'm told that it's my job to translate a very important piece of paper it's very difficult for me to say that i don't understand all of it and imagine and all through all these little mistakes we've gone to where we were where we're right now mm. there is nature again shows us Oh, you know, something went wrong. It's all right. It will just just let the tides move. It will work itself out again. Um, yeah, that. I'm not I go all over the place. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's what I'm like. <laughs> yeah. I think it's also about when you're out in nature, being aware of the creatures that you see 
and maybe a potential interaction. Yeah. Um, quite a number of years ago now, sort of, I was walking um, on Hayter uh, on Hayter on Dartmoor, and um, I'd sort of got sort of like some greeny outdoor trousers on, and a dragonfly came and landed on my trousers, and it was just like okay, and I knew I I'm. I don't know whether I even looked up to see what the meaning was, but I knew there was something there. Yeah. And, it, you know, I'd say that, you know, people say, oh, if you see a robin or if you see a butterfly or sort of something, a, a member of your family's close. Um, but there is so much more to it than that. But, you know, somebody would say, oh, if you see a robin, we've got, you know, they say oh, one robin per garden. Well, we've got robins in the back, robins in the side, and robins in the front. So you know, sort of, we've got three different gardens um, sort of all around the house. So we've definitely got more. Than, so if I see a robin, it's normal for me. Mm -hmm. You know, hearing the buzzards overhead, that is normal for me. Hearing the crows and the rooks, and that's normal for me because it happens practically every day um so is it they're all trying to give me a message or or am i just actually open to hearing it and seeing it yeah and it's that openness it's coming back to the changing eyes and the opening our eyes yeah. to the nature that is around mm -hmm. us because unless you open your eyes you are not going to see it yeah you know we had um um a humming no what was it Called, was it called a hummingbird moth that appeared in the garden a few years ago and the way it was hovering around the, the, the buddleia was just like a hummingbird but it just happened to be a moth um, and it's being open to those things we've now got a pond in the garden we've got sort of at least eight newts in that pond that, that appear and we know we've got frogs in the garden you know sort of because our garden has been set up for wildlife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we get the bees, we get the butterflies, we get the dragonflies and the damselflies. We get it. We get bats flying around the garden sort of at the right time of the year at dusk, you know, and sort of the, the friend that I, you know, we share the house and he loves going out and just sitting out in the garden and the bats buzzing around his head, you know, sort of it, it's because he is so he is really into nature um and it's helping us to open our eyes to that connection yeah you know yeah. a fallen a fallen tree isn't a dead tree it's a home mm -hmm. yeah i usually uh, call them fallen so giants true. yeah yeah it's true it's a home yeah, it's it. So, it, do you think? Sorry. <laughs> so, do so do you think there is a way that you can, in your work, you know, work the animals who are obviously saying to the owners, "This is what you need." To find that that's increasing people's connection back to nature over the course of time or do you not see people again you know do you feel it's connecting them in to where we could be or, it's, or could yes, be it totally is thank you for that question actually it's, it's a great question because it changes people's eyes they start to see things differently because all of a sudden even though i mean they did book a consult or some people get it as a gift but they still need to book it uh, they've done something they never done before and they always could hear because the animals always tell things first so that the person know like there's no way this could be made up before the, the big the, the big things come so it has changed it which means that when they walk whether it's a dog or a cat when they're walking and they see a bird they're gonna go like oh hold on <laughs> that thing over there which i thought was a thing actually speaks that's the first, you know, that's the first step. Um, so it does. And it changes sometimes on a subtle level and sometimes on a huge level. And I do see quite a lot of people coming back saying, I want to learn this. Um, 
and and I mean that's that's that happens happens to most of them um, because the things that the animals tell their people is things that you have to listen to. You can't just you can't just turn your back on it. So that's um, that's a beautiful question. Mm. And, and, and something that I learned from one of my colleagues in Canada, because she lives, oh, like you guys live in nature too, but she said uh, when she started animal communication, she's always been fascinated with animals. She said she would just say thank you uh, for every animal she saw. And that's when they started to come more, like your garden is made for wildlife. Um, they, they, just, they just come more and more. And, and I remember the bats when we were last time when we were in Scotland, when we were in the Cairngorms at the end. And so we've, we're, we were driving to, to David's in Fife and we started off on the West Coast and then drove, the last stop was in the Cairngorms and on Airbnb we found this castle. You can stay in with your dogs, about to never stay in the castle. So we, we arrived there at seven in the evening and we just walked outside in the big garden there with with our with my two dogs and the bats started to come in and I love bats because mm. I, I just went whoa so I stood under this tree and I just kept going thank you thank you and there were more and more and more to the point where my husband who's not into this at all he was over there and I heard him say you need to stop now I don't know what you're doing but it's <laughs> not really spooky you gotta stop <laughs> And the only thing I was doing was like, oh my God, you guys are awesome. Thank you. And they kept coming. It was just amazing. Um, it's yeah. interesting. Shamanically, uh, the bat is all about transformation. That would be the total totem animal for transformation. Ah. So I would feel that, that was, there was a shift going through him and that was opening his eyes considerably, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Changing his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it does when you, that power of gratitude really does work, doesn't it? Yeah. When it's from the heart, the power of gratitude really does work. And more gratitude we give to nature, I suppose, in the animal kingdom, the more we are going to connect ourselves and reconnect ourselves back to where we should be. Yeah. And we are a part of it. We're not above it. We're not below it. We are mm -hmm. a part of it. Yeah. And the more, you know, your work is connecting people really right back, isn't it? Mm. And in your heart, you're part of your... Um, reason to be here isn't it cecilia yeah. i think yeah and that that's why i also love taking people out into nature when we're talking yoga or um or training even because if you're out, out in nature you will connect to your heart it just happens like we had this one before covid <laughs> because then it was stopped again uh i went i had this um um, hiking and yoga vacations up in, in the Swedish Lapland with a colleague up there and just looking at the photos of the people when they walk up the mountain on Thursday and then when they walk down on Sunday the different people and it has nothing to do with the meditation and the yoga that we do with them it's the mountain and the reindeers mm. and the, it's it's just like we're getting goosebumps we're not doing anything mm. it's the nature does it and it's total Total transformation, change of eyes, change of everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just definitely. Yeah. Uh, but you only got to think about those people who've said, um, yeah, they've got a dog and the dog manages to step in a place that hurts and then they discover that they've got a growth or, or whatever. Yeah. How many people's pets, and it can happen with cats too, how many people's pets have actually supported their human all of them in amazing ways yeah you know and i would say with one of my one of my cats um and when he passed um and he obviously hadn't been well for a while bless him i just hadn't understood 
which was a real shame. But then maybe I wasn't meant to. Mm. I felt that there were actually some, for want of a better way of putting it, some negative energies from me that he took with him when he passed. And I don't know where that came from, but at some stage it was, do you know what? Something has changed. And I know that he helped that. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we struggle to connect with the wider picture of nature, can we not start with our pets? Yeah. Because for every single person, is it not a matter of starting somewhere? Yeah. So if, if having a cat or a dog, a budgie, whatever it might be, is, is your starting place for, your, for our reconnection to nature. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I don't think the connection's ever broken. I think the no. connection, we've, we've just lost our feeling to that connection. Yeah. It's there. We just, it's about a reawakening it within yeah. ourselves and each and every one of us. And as your husband, stop doing what you're doing. We don't we need more bats, you know, all those. <laughs> they, they, that's great. But it, it helps to awaken something within somebody else. And our openness to that. As I said to you, I've spent time with wolves. I've actually had physical contact with wolves. Um, and that is amazing. Allow yourself. I sort of had, I didn't actually have physical contact with the dolphins because they were wild dolphins, but I did see them. I've got an amazing photograph I took underwater and I was accused. You said you didn't get that close to them. I didn't. But obviously the water magnifies things. And so it looked as if I was so much closer than I was. Your your connection with that shark, the connection with wildlife. Mm -hmm. We can all have that. Yeah. If we go step back into the peace and tranquility of nature and how amazing nature is. And she knows how to balance herself. Yeah. yeah. So sort of we're coming to the end um of the program so if as anybody cecilia let's start with you as obviously this was your topic i think i've said my final bit <laughs> so if you've got anything else you would like to share before we close well the, the only thing and I, we've touched on it we more touched on it we talk about it i think in every sentence we all four of us have said it's that animals and nature our teachers and healers and um, not just our teachers and healers like 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 you guys were saying too we, we're theirs and they teach us to see everything as a teaching and a healing including a meeting with somebody at the bus stop or um, and that's what it's all about and for me that's been a practice that makes life a little easier to live like we don't have the feeling that we have to perform all the time it's like yeah the circle Teachers and healers. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. David, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I just think I've learned so much. I won't give up because I know we're getting short time. I've learned so much about the animal kingdom and the connection to nature from Cecilia and our talks over the past 10 years. So um, it's been really beautiful. And I just want to thank you for being a guest on here tonight and sharing some of your views and your passions. So thank you. Thank you guys. Patricia. Yeah, I, I would just like to say thank you as well, Cecilia. And um, I've never met anybody called Cecilia before. And my maternal grandmother was Cecilia and I didn't meet her. So when you came in, there was a, in another level, on another level, David may be able to tell me. I just thought there was another connection as well. So it's been lovely to spend time with you and get to know you and love your work. And, and I loved our total conversation. It was really lovely and learned a lot as well. So thank you. Thank you.
So th thank you so much. I've just put Cecilia's um, website up into the chat. And if you're watching this sort of on sort of via the YouTube, I, they, I have put those underneath the, uh, the video so that you can, if you wish to connect with Cecilia, please do. You'll also find um, website connections for the, th the three of us as well. We're here sort of, you know, please think about connecting with us. It, we're all, we all bring so much dif different things to the table. Um, but yes, if we can all con connect back to nature, um, it would be of benefit to each and every one of us. Um, it really would, and a benefit to our planet. Um, and sort of, I'm a great believer in the support we can bring to, to Gaia, to Mother Earth, to Pachamama, and all the other names that bless her she has. <laughs> so thank, thank you all for, for this beautiful conversation um, this yeah. evening. It's been brilliant, because it's evening for us while we're doing this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Next week, there's going to be a talk. Next week, there's going to be a thoughtful nuggets and pearls. You never know when you are being lucky, and I'm being joined by Shirley Batty. And then the week after that, we have another today's conversation program for you: becoming a clear channel. And that probably isn't much of anything about listening, just as we've been talking about tonight. <laughs> But if it, but because it can be from so much, can't it? But then we're being um, joined by Susan Brown. So thank you for this evening. Thank you, folks. Please do feel connect. You know, feel if you feel you would like to connect with any of us, please do. We do these so that you know, sort of. Hopefully, we all grow, um, and so and live on a much happier, healthier planet. Take care. Be safe. Stay well. Yeah. Namaste, folks. Good. Good. Bye. 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 Bye.